What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Halloween review series and it's time for Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers. I just did Halloween Kills, was not happy with it and now it's time for another film that most fans that I know of think is absolute trash. This is not a beloved film I don't believe in the franchise. There's some defenders of it. I'm going to be somewhat of a defender of it in this review but having said that no, this is not one of the better Halloween movies in the franchise for many reasons. However, I have to admit, I watched this growing up. I watched this as a young kid, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. And at that time, I really enjoyed this movie. And I still kind of do. Maybe some of that is nostalgia. I recognize all the flaws. But I love Jamie Lloyd, who's back. I like Michael Myers in it, even though, yeah, we'll talk about the mask. And there are lots of horrible scenes in this movie and dumb decisions and really terrible decisions and it was rushed into production to the point that they were filming this before the screenplay was even finished and they were coming off of the huge success of Halloween 4 which I just talked about too and I thought that Halloween 4 was a damn borderline masterpiece. I love Halloween 4 but I want to start with some of the positives and things I like things I used to like and still do like about Halloween 5. Starting with Dr. Loomis, a lot of fans really hate the way that he was presented in this movie as kind of, you know, borderline psychopath. He's kind of scary. He's shaking Jamie. He's scaring her more than Michael Myers is. And he's just kind of losing it. But it seems like a, a logical progression to me from what we saw. I mean, he's this is his fourth movie now. The first one, he was already, you know, the guy everyone thought was crazy and trying to convince people. Halloween 2, you know, he blew himself up trying to kill Michael Myers. Myers survived. He survived. He got burns all over his face. Is that logical? Does that make sense? No, but we knew they were going to make more movies, so... Halloween 4, he's back and, you know, still trying and trying and trying. He's getting older and this is this pure evil here. He can't get rid of the man. He's losing his mind a little bit. He's going crazy. Like, and then she won't tell him and she's she's a mute, which we'll get into that. I don't like that. But the fact is she's a mute in this movie. She can't speak and she seems to be protecting Michael Myers. He's freaking out. He's losing it. Why are you protecting him? Why? Of course, I prefer the the, uh, the Loomis from the original Halloween and Halloween 2 and even Halloween 4. I guess I would prefer that Loomis, but at the same time, as far as just, you know, what you would expect after you know, how many how many movies, how, many, how often can he keep doing the same thing and just, you know, be the common collective doctor just trying to convince people that this guy's pure evil until he starts to lose it. So I didn't so much mind Dr. Loomis in this movie, to be honest. Also, I thought when uh, Michael Myers starts finally getting after Jamie, that there's some good moments there in the laundry chute, and there were some brutal moments here and some scary, some legitimate scary moments where you're like, is he going to get her? You know, what's going to happen here? Because after the end of Halloween 4, I felt like anything is possible. So yeah, obviously, once you've watched the movie, you know what's going to happen. But I still remember the first time watching it, and I was, you know, horrified in certain moments in this movie. And a lot of it had to do with Michael Myers attacking Jamie at the end and a lot of that so I thought that there was a pretty good climax towards the end of this film including Loomis being somebody who could actually get an opportunity to take part in taking down Michael Myers at the end. Not that they killed him, but at least, you know, they were able to get him detained again and, and, and get control of him. You knew there was going to be another movie and there was going to be more kills in that movie and whatnot. But, hey, you know, that was awesome seeing, you know, Dr. Loomis hitting him with that plank and uh, it was just nuts. And again, with Loomis kind of going nuts in this movie, it all came together. Loomis just, he's just, just obsessed right now. Just, just, uh, you know, absolutely obsessed with taking down Michael Myers, getting rid of this evil that he's becoming, you know, somewhat crazy. I don't know about evil, but he's losing it himself. I also love the look of Jamie Lloyd in this movie, you know, a slightly different direction, of course, from Halloween 4. And this is just like a nice progression with this, you know, at the end when she puts this kind of, you know, Halloween makeup on her face. It's not, it's not over the top. It's just a little bit. And just this, this, this overall look right here and the acting, you know, she's so serious. The cops are trying to be like, talk to her like she's a little kid. And then, you know, can, you can see she's all dead serious. She knows everything that's at stake. And uh, she's just a great character. And I thought she really brought that everything that Danielle Harris could do to Bring that back to Jamie Lloyd. She does it. She does everything right in this movie with the script that she's given. And at the end of the day, I'd rather this movie exist than not exist. 
but there yeah, there are major problems. I'm gonna just touch on some of the the man in black, the supernatural elements that were brought into this film because there really weren't that many. And it was to the point that it was confusing. Like, what is this man gets off a bus? You see his boots. You're like, oh, something else here. What? Oh, we're going to get some backstory, Michael Myers. We're going to find well, who's this guy. It never tells you anything. You just see little glimpses of it here and there. But you don't learn too much because it's setting it up for a sequel. So at the time, you kind of understand, OK, I guess we're going to find out about this in the next movie, which you do eventually. But yeah, for a standalone movie, you need to do more than that because it's just like, a movie needs to stand on its own and you can't, you know putting little things like that in here that don't go anywhere and don't do anything and it turns out to be a stupid thing anyway but at least that's my opinion we'll talk about that more in Halloween 6 but yeah all that didn't do anything to help the movie to me it only hurt the movie the mask in this movie is certainly one of the worst in the franchise I I, I can't deny that again when I first saw the movie I, I don't remember noticing it as a, as a 9 10 11 year old child I don't remember noticing it until later on I think I didn't notice it till I mean, like third or fourth watch when I finally said, that, why does that mask look so weird? Like it did take me time as a kid before I even noticed that there were different masks. I just assumed that it would be all the same, you know, mask. But uh, other than Halloween 4 was clearly a little cleaner and white, but I thought that's because it was a new mask. He went to the store, picked up a new mask. But Halloween 5 picks up right where Halloween 4 left off when he got shot down that shaft. And, you know, he, now he's floating down a river and all of a sudden his mask is completely different. So that's a a terrible continuity right there it makes zero sense and the mask is worse and so if you didn't like the mask in four now some people may prefer five to four but i prefer four all day over this horrible mask and the whole logic of some random hermit coming across michael myers saying oh i'll take you in and care for your comatose body for a one year and then he wakes up kills him and goes back on halloween so we can have another Halloween one year later with Michael Myers. Could there have been a better way to write that? I think so. I mean, you're thinking like if, if some hermit does come across a guy like that, you take him in. Okay, that's that's believable, right? Trying to help the guy. But when he doesn't wake up, you don't just keep him in your house for a year. You know, you take him to the hospital, right? You put him in your pickup truck. I'm sure he has some way uh, or call or somehow, you know, you, you get the guy help that he needs. You don't just keep a guy in a coma passed out in your house for a year. But now let's get to Jamie Lloyd who is mute. She can't even talk. She can't talk because she's traumatized and jacked up. And I get it. I mean, at the end of Halloween 4, you have to make a decision. Are, are we going to actually have Jamie Lloyd as the killer now? And she's going to take over Michael Myers' spirit? I mean, you could have made a badass movie if you really had confidence and said, let's go for it. Would people have accepted it, though, without Michael Myers? Without Michael Myers with his mask? I don't know that. I think if you made it good enough, they may have. But that's not a risk they were going to take. That's not a risk the studio was going to take. And they were going to bring back Michael Myers. So they had to do something with Jamie Lloyd. So they said, let's make her. She's she's now, she can't speak. She's, she's traumatized. And she did that because Michael Myers basically made her do that to her foster mom. Try to kill her at the end of four. And now we have our movie. I like that they still kind of maintain that telepathic communication that she has with Michael, that she's got a little connection. But that being said, uh, they didn't have to make her mute. I, I think that was a mistake. Uh, she's one of uh, she's a kind of a beloved character. She's coming back for another movie. You know, one of our main characters. She is our main character now. I mean, yeah, there's Tina, which we'll talk about. You know, but all in all, you know, a, we want we want to hear her talk. She's fantastic, and she does a great job with the script they give her, even as a mute, you know, screaming and trying to, to make a noise, and then later on when she finally is able to talk a little bit, but she never really gets her full, you know, uh, until the very end, maybe she can't really talk uh, like we're used to. So I just thought that was a, a missed opportunity, and, uh, and I hated that. There's also Rachel. Rachel's back. Loved Rachel in Halloween 4. She gets killed off right away. Now, do I hate that? Not so much. It lets you know. Nobody's off limits. Anybody can be killed here. Michael Myers don't care. He wants to kill everyone. And Tina is now the main character. I don't hate Tina as much as a lot of people do. She's more of a fun, you know, uh, just crazy girl, right? And just not your prototypical, you know, main final girl in a movie. But I don't mind that so much. It's just that, you know, when you make Jamie Lloyd a mute, that, that hurts because now Tina's got to carry the movie. And, and I don't know if she does that successfully. I, I don't think so. Uh, but, you know, eventually when things get serious and she's finally running into dead bodies, yeah, then she's not joking and laughing no more. Now it's serious. So if you come to like Tina, then she's not so bad. But, you know, 
I don't know. I, I, I thought she was okay. I thought she was okay. Now, not as good as Rachel in Halloween 4. Not even close. Nowhere in Laurie Strode's. Uh, her and Laurie Strode are nowhere. Not, no, you know, not even in the same ballpark. That being said, I don't hate her as much as most people do. And I love that Jamie loves her. When she sees Tina, she gets excited. She wants to hug. She's at Tina. And so it's all, you know, she can't. Oh, more like, because she can't talk. But all in all, hey, it's okay. She's okay. Okay, Tina's okay. And the whole plot of this movie, I can deal with it. But there's negatives as far as just the presentation. You know, there are some ADR, some voiceover, you know, bad dubbing in this movie. It's like, oh, I, can no I noticed that, you know, the first time I heard it, I think. There's a few lines that Tina says. They're like, whoa, it's like, all of a sudden it sounded a little echoey, a little different. Oh, that's because it was, it was recorded afterwards and not done that great. So some technical issues and things like that. But I think one of the things I've always, since a child, been annoyed on this movie is the fake outs. This annoying guy who can constantly is wearing a michael myers mask to fake us out over and over and over uh, up until very late in the movie the most in my opinion of every horror movie i've ever seen the most insulting fake out what do you want to call it it kind of a jump scare slash fake out and i kind of knew it was fake from day one but i'm like no there's no way and this is a scene where this guy in a Michael Myers mask, they show him, he jumps out from behind some hay. The girl's like, oh my God. And uh, she gets scared. She literally screams. She's scared to death. He's got a knife. It's a fake knife, but you know you don't know at the time. He jumps on her, takes her to the ground and starts just going to town, stabbing her and stabbing her and stabbing her. And she's screaming. And it's like, and I kind of knew it was a fake out because I could see his body. And it's like, this is not Michael Myers' body. <laughs> this is, he's not wearing the, quite, the pants aren't quite right. And just to, he just looks a little skinnier. He doesn't quite look like, he, he doesn't, doesn't look like Michael Myers. So I think this is a fake out, but I'm like, surely not. And it ended up being a fake out. And I'm like, dude. And then she's like, you scared me to death. And I'm like, that is so lame. I mean, how many times are we going to do this? And that fake out was just the biggest offender of all because no, nobody would do that to somebody. Like, that's just too far. Um, and, and he did, he, there was this, he did it about that guy with his Michael Myers mask. I mean, five, six, seven times in this movie. To the point that cops had their guns out. He he had a knife. He's like, ah, I'm gonna kill everyone. The cops had their not, their guns out, and he kept going until he finally took the knife off, mask off. Starts laughing like so unrealistic. You're gonna get shot. Like nobody's that stupid. Well, maybe, but <laughs> but no. I mean, it was just so dumb. And over and over and over and over and over. And stop it, please stop it. But yeah, the jump scares, the fake outs. That was the most probably the most annoying thing for me in this movie you had the you know man man in black crap that did nothing and went nowhere and you know just overall not as good as the previous entries in my opinion and in the opinion in opinion of most but i still find enjoyment in halloween 5 it's not my least favorite of the franchise at the time it probably was but since then we've had some crap come out namely halloween resurrection if you haven't told i, I haven't noticed I, I hate that movie and i will Look forward to doing a review on that one when the time comes. But Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. In my opinion, if you're a fan of the Halloween franchise, if you enjoyed Halloween 4, if you love Jamie Lloyd, you want to see where the story goes with her, you want to see some more Loomis, all the characters we love, and Michael Myers back, and yeah, with a, a terrible mask, but he's back, brutal, crazy, and killing people, you might want to check out Halloween 5. Just be ready for some... Uh, over the top fake out jump scares, not the best production, not the best film in the franchise, but still entertaining enough in my opinion. And I would say, see this movie if you're bored. That's my take on Halloween 5. Don't hate it as much as most, but yeah, as you can see, lots of things that they didn't do that well. Lots of bad decisions to not let Jamie Lloyd talk, be able to talk terrible. Just some some decisions that weren't the best and some production you know issues which has to do with shooting it so quick, you know, having to do some voiceover, some dubbing afterwards that didn't turn out that great, things like that. But overall, still an enjoyable entry in my opinion, and I think that if you're a Halloween fan, you should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. So, you have a great day. Let me know in the in the comments what you think of Halloween 5 Revenge of Michael Myers. Did you hate this movie? Is it complete 
trash totally one of the worst the worst in the franchise there are people who think it's worse than resurrection hey that's okay that's an opinion and, and i and i I, I get it. I mean, it has a lot of flaws. So let me know what you guys think. Have a great day. Be ready for Halloween 6 coming up soon. We'll talk to you guys next time. Hit that subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. And we'll see you.